Hello folks, Denobi2 here. Thank you for joining me once again on another visual tour. On this video, I am going to discuss and share my collection of Nautilus submarine models that I have collected throughout the decades. This marvelous, beautiful little ship and how this little ship also made me fall in love uh, with, uh, with Tokyo. <laughs> yes, I love Japan. I love Tokyo. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's adventures, but, uh, before I, I talk about Japan, uh, let's talk about what really got me started. It was, uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years ago with this film, this DVD special edition of, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, this particular DVD, uh, was part of Disney's movie club, so I didn't even go out and get this. This was, uh, this was part of a subscription, and there was a particular... Uh, behind the scenes uh, that was included in this DVD that I'll never forget and it is the tour of the Nautilus uh, you know the the concept the creative liberties uh, that uh, at the time when the film was released back in 1954 uh, the amount of work production prep uh, the realism that was added to this I love this film I love this film uh, I love Captain Nemo. I love Kirk Douglas. I everything um, about this film, and my love of the Nautilus. And seeing this film back in, I think it was released. This DVD, I think it was 2002. Uh, I just instantly fell in love with the Nautilus submarine, and I wanted it. I simply wanted it. So I've been collecting the Nautilus uh, submarines ever since, and. On this tour, we're going to start off with this little guy here. This uh, one, uh, this tiny little uh, submarine here. This is part of the the Revotech uh, series. This was the little miniature bonus sub that was included in that uh, set. Because you actually got two versions of the Nautilus with this particular set. And I think it retailed at the time for 100 bucks. The movie Revo series number 7. Nautilus, and I think it was $100 on, on pre-order. I think it was released in 2016, and it came with this, this little guy and uh, with that little miniature sub, and then it came with this. This is a, I want to say it's a hybrid of plastic and die cast, because there is actually die cast components inside of it. Not a lot, though, because the outer shell of this sub is actually uh, a plastic uh, or molded resin of some sort of a polymer, but uh, it measures a little over 10 and a half inches, and uh, it does have a, a few cool features on it, and one of them is uh, the articulated uh, sub hatches on there, the uh, the water in which, with a special tool here, a little Allen wrench, it, it does light up. It has that uh, that uh, eerie yellow glow to it. It has that, and then the alligator eyes on top. If you know where to look for it, that little tiny uh, sub man uh, man hatch there, manhole hatch. Uh, push it on there and it doesn't light up but the actual the actual lights on there doesn't actually really aren't really bright and I did actually do a, its own separate review on this so if you are interested in learning more about the movie uh, about this Revotech sub um, it, it's on this channel uh, the only lackluster thing is the base the the base on this one was not very uh, it's not very promising but everything else on this for the price point and what you're getting the fact that you're getting yeah, I mean, you're getting two subs for the price of one. Uh, the propellers do spin, so that's always a nice feature. Uh, in this video, you'll, you'll see that certain models of mine in my collection, the actual propellers do not spin. Uh, the lifeboat does pop out, which is nice. Next one is this. This is the Sega. I want to say it was a promotional Sega X Plus, a, a more affordable, economical version of the Nautilus. This is something that you would actually get in Japan. Uh, you would, uh, kind of like in a crane game. You know those crane games that, that uh, you'd, you'd pop money into it and you would try to grab that box. This here, I originally had it uh, back in 2003. This was actually one of the first ones that I ended up buying. Ended up selling and then ended up uh, reacquiring. Has a little uh, squid on there. Oops, a little squid on there. I did paint the eyes black on this quid to kind of give it a little bit more of a realism, and I did add uh, rust paint to it. I didn't like the color; it seemed a little bit too gray, uh, or kind of a gray browner. So I ended up uh, kind of touching it up, kind of giving it a little bit of weathering look. Still nice though; still a very, very nice piece. 
and I, and I want to say you can still buy this on eBay if you're lucky between a hundred and two hundred dollars at the time when I first bought it, it was about 50 bucks next one on my collection is the Aluski if I'm saying that right the Aluski uh, theme park attraction Nautilus miniature diorama I guess you can kind of call this this is based off of the uh, Magic Kingdom Disneyland 20,000 leagues under the sea attraction vehicle I'm very fortunate that I was able to ride this as a kid uh, multiple times before its uh, closure. I want to say, I think it ended up closing back in 1995 or 94. But I do remember in the 80s and in the early 90s riding this, and I remember that it always had a long wait. I remember it was always cramped, and I remember that uh, it was always hot. It was always hot inside, but you know what? As a kid, uh, it was fun. It was it was magical. Now, as as a kid, I, I enjoyed this attraction. Um, as an adult and finding a new appreciation for the film, I did not know what I was experiencing at the time. If that makes sense, you as a kid, you just uh, you just take it as a as a ride, as a Magic Kingdom ride. But uh, as an adult and appreciating the way I see the Nautilus, I'm like, wow, I really would love to ride this attraction. Uh, it measured for about was it six inches there. Nice cool thing with this particular diorama model is that it does light up and I want to say I paid a hundred bucks for this I don't think you can get this anymore. This was released back in 2012. I think or 2011. I love that they it glows I love that the actual uh, eyes the, the, the porthole eyes do light up yellow and has that eerie green glow which um if you want to split hairs, it doesn't make any sense why it would glow green under the water. Uh, it, it's just more of an added effect, but it, it works. Uh, it does work. Beautiful. I love this one. This is a, this is a nice piece uh, in my collection. Uh, something else, too, that I wanted to uh, point out. It, uh, not, every, not every piece or diorama for, for the Nautilus I collect is high-end. If you're lucky, like last year, uh, the 65th anniversary... Of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was 2019, and uh, you can still pick up this Christmas or ornament. This is about 20 bucks. I want to say you can still pick this up at a Disney store. I got this last year, so this is a nice one. And back in 2012, I did end up getting the Hallmark uh, Christmas Ornament Nautilus. Very nice piece. I want to say you can still get the Hallmark Nautilus for under 40 bucks. Uh, at the time, I, it was 20. It was it retailed for 20. What's nice about this one is that it, it does light up, and uh, you know for for 20 bucks, the the amount of detail it is small, probably about three inches, I want to say, but it does light up, and it is a Christmas ornament. It's definitely one of my favorite Christmas ornaments. I I love collecting uh, unique vehicles and characters uh, for for Christmas, especially for for the Hallmark. Uh, line but uh, I want to say they, they did a really really good job on that they really did and it, and it turns itself off and and so forth I, I don't think they ever released another Nautilus or anything else for the film from Hallmark I think it's just been I think it's just been this still nice piece you can still go on eBay and, and pick this up and then that right there the the lower one with the squid attachment you can still probably get that online and you can probably still get that on at the Disney store at the theme parks now my love for the Nautilus uh, last year I did end up going to uh, to Japan uh, and I but I, I visited Japan back in 2004 I was lucky enough to visit Japan in 2004 two years after falling or one or two years falling in love with the film um, I ended up picking up this is the uh, I ended up uh, Rebind this one. See this particular. This is a Tokyo Disney Sea sub exclusive that was made for the commemorative grand opening of Tokyo Disney Sea for 2001. And uh, when I visited the park in 2004, I ended up buying this from the actual park. I ended up selling it, and so this is a re repurchase. And you can see right there if you look at that little weird blotch of, of like a square brown. It's uh, it's because the nail cap, when I bought this pre-owned on, on eBay, it was missing. 
uh, this particular this spot right there, that little square boss spot, was missing on the opposite end. I ended up getting a good deal on this though, because this is if you can find this particular Nautilus on eBay for under 1K, you're very fortunate. Uh, because this was damaged and missing parts, and I was able to get a good deal on this one. Um, I want, and you can see, and I, I used like steel putty, and I ended up painting it. But overall, this is probably the only defect for buying this pre-owned. I think this one of the strongest attributes on this particular Tokyo Disney Sea Nautilus is the base. I think they knocked it out of the park on the base. I love that Victorian era steampunk design effort that they took into this it's beautiful the base is wooden uh, the uh, Victorian era mounts are are metal uh, so they're very sturdy and then I love the quote this is Captain Nemo you are now back at Mysterious Island I love that they were able to to to, to add that quote out of all my Nautilus out of all my Nautilus collections this is by far uh, the best base they knocked it out of the park. Every other base in uh, that's provided with my Nautilus in my collection is lackluster. This one here is top notch. Love it, love it, love it. So going back uh, with this particular uh, piece here, uh, I had no interest in ever visiting Japan. I had no interest in ever going to Tokyo, but because I ended up watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea on DVD and falling in love with this Nautilus, my sister, uh, convinced me because she was globetrotting at the time. I was like, hey, would you like to go to Japan? I had no interest in ever going to Japan. I didn't care. I don't like Tokyo, whatever. But I knew that they had just opened up the theme park and I knew that they had just opened up this whole mysterious island uh, section to it. I'm like, you know what? I want to go. And I, I, you know, I give all credit to the Nautilus, to the film. For uh, dragging me out to Tokyo because the main reason you can ask my sister is uh, traveling to Japan, traveling to Tokyo was simply for the Nautilus. I didn't know that this was a theme park exclusive, but I remember that my jaw dropped when I entered the Nautilus gift shop uh, at the uh, at the island and I saw this. And I want to say at the time it retailed for about 300 bucks. I'm like, I grabbed it. Uh, it does light up. It does make the noise. And this is cool. If you take the lifeboat and you flip it around, the propellers do spin. Nice. I, again, this is this was designed and made 20 years ago. Again, this was made and designed for the 2001 grand opening of Tokyo Disney by the Sea. At the time, I just fell in love with this piece. The fact that it glows yellow, it lights up. The alligator's light, uh, the, the alligator eyes light up. Uh, it has noise, it has a sound effect, uh, the, the propeller spin. To me, this was top notch and I still think it holds up. I still, I still think 20 years later, this is still um, a phenomenal uh, piece. It's not as detailed as the X Plus, which we'll discuss in this video, but this is still out of all my knowledge. This is out of all the Nautilus that I, I've collected, this is by far one of my favorites, if not the favorite. Uh, it takes two AA batteries, zinc alloy metal, super heavy. It's like a cast iron, cast metal type mold, so it's super heavy. Uh, if this thing hits the floor, it's it's gonna break something. <laughs> it, it just is, it just is. But uh, these little two AA batteries on there, and uh, clever design there with the actual uh, man cover there, manhole cover there to. to, to to connect it but uh, yeah like I like you know like I said this was uh, I ended up selling this if you're wondering why why did you sell it and rebuy it? it was because I ended up I needed a down payment uh, for my for my house so this piece helped uh, part of the down payment for my house <laughs> uh, this here was something else I picked up on that 2004 trip this is my sister and that is the Nautilus at mysterious island that's built at the, the theme park still have that and uh, I did end up taking video I've, I've always had a video camcorder in my hand and I you know it was it was a different era I mean that's <laughs> this was 15-16 uh, years ago I'm not sure and uh, just blown away by it I've been to Japan three times now and this was my very first trip but again 
folks like, why did you ever, why did you ever, like, oh, it was because of the Nautilus, because of 20,000 leagues under the sea. So anytime I ever get a, every, anytime I ever get a chance to visit Japan, it's, I'm going there. <laughs> now, uh, let's move on to the Diecast Age X Plus, the Disney Nautilus. This is the Rolls Royce of models for the Nautilus. This is the creme de la creme. Um, this is by far the, the best scaled model Nautilus that there is on the market. This was released, I want to say, 2016 or 2017. This was this is not that old. It's just a few years old. And the amount of detail, the amount of features that they added on to this is mind-blowing. Simply mind-blowing. Uh, this ruler is not going to be big enough. Let's grab a... Uh, Let's grab a tape measure here, and uh, it's what 16 inches, I want to say, from uh, tip to tip. Yeah, about 16 inches. 16 inches, and uh, yeah, pop, pop that on there. The detail. This is probably out of all the, out of all the pieces I have. This is the one where you can actually look inside. Uh, you can see uh, through the saloon from one end to the other. And that's that's incredible in my collection. I mean, the fact that you can see like the chair, like the saloon chair. Uh, you can look inside uh, the, the the captain's crow nest through the uh, through the actual big window bays. You can see the uh, the captain's wheel. Uh, it's by far the best. The only thing that X Plus did not do well on this one was the base, which I'll I'll detail a little bit better. Uh, so let's go over some of the cool. Uh, features on there. Like I said, you can see through the uh, uh, captain's uh, crow's nest there. Uh, that little manhole cover there, it does. It is articulated. You want to be careful. They did give you a, a steel tool, but I've, I've learned just to not to scratch it, just to use my, my fingernails. But if you're just right, I mean, that does pop up right on there. That's nice. That's always a little neat. I mean, like I said, for a scale of this, little manhole cover and you're like, oh, whatever, did I mean, that's, that's not that, uh, it's not impressive. Well, what is impressive, there, there's the, uh, the ladder rungs on there. Uh, oh, you know what, uh, that, the, uh, the, the back manhole cover does pop open. That's a nice little feature on there. What else, what else does this do? Uh, uh oh yeah, the, um, the lifeboat, uh, the little, the little skiff does come out, a little magnet. Uh, it does have the diving planes. There you go. That's neat. A lot of the models that I have for the Nautilus, they don't include that. And it's just, why not? That's just a neat little feature there. The, the diving planes are articulated. Again, you can see through the uh, through the iris, through the main ship's iris, from one end to the other. That's nice. And there you go. You can kind of see right through there on there. And I'll, I'll, I'll light this up. You can kind of see it there. The bottom uh, hatch is articulated. Just want to be careful. Use your, there you go. And uh, it doesn't, it's not a button. You would think that they would put a button underneath there to turn on the lights or anything, but it's not. Uh, the actual mechanism is on is on top, and I'll show that to you. But again, just showing the amount of detail on a model of this scale. And the, and the propellers do spin. I'll turn that on in a second. Uh, let's go, oh, the base. I want to show you the base really quick. I mean, they put so much work into this model. Uh, the base is, it's, it's, it's lackluster. Focus on there. Simple plastic base, there's not much creativity. I mean, you can clearly see that the R&D definitely went on the ship. Uh, the ship, by the way, is die cast. Uh, it's die cast, it's, it's very, it, it's heavy, and there is plastic molded components on the outside. Now, to turn this thing on, see the top part, does uh, does detach and there's a button there and it uses uh, two AAA batteries on there and it'll last for a long time if you just want to keep it on and just enjoy it oh the little anchor there threw me off guard there's another uh, articulated feature on there little anchor on there but anyway the button there so there's two features on here two two button modes so the first one uh, will turn on the propeller in the back and it lights up the alligator eyes and that's it so it's trying, it, it, what it does, it, it doesn't power everything up. So you, it's either you turn on the propellers or you turn on the saloon lights. Look at that back rudder. That's articulated too, by the way. That's cool. 
I wasn't kidding. This really is like the creme de la creme model right here. So the propeller lights up once you turn it on to the first mode and then you pop this on and if you can see it, if, but my lights aren't too bright, you can see the alligator eyes on top are lit. So right there. Now there is no mode that will turn on the, the two main uh, eyes uh, that the big uh, from the, from, the, uh, from the captain's crow's nest on there. Uh, it does not light up. But the saloon does power up and it powers up beautifully. They did top notch work. It's not just one bulb that illuminates it. It's, it's a it's a combination of micro lights. And that to me is is probably one of the best selling features on there. Most model kits they'll just add one bulb and it'll illuminate it from the inside. But this here, it it has multiple micro lights. And if you can see it just right, you can see the chair. And that's not the best. Uh, the camera has trouble focusing, but uh, it is detailed inside. They they did put the uh, the work inside of it. And uh, but yes, that's so. If you want those on, nothing else will be turned on. The the propellers will not uh, spin, and uh, the alligator eyes will not will not light up. But uh, overall, um, very nice piece. This actually. When it was released, it didn't blow up in value until a couple years afterwards. So you were able to get a good deal on this. You were able to get pick this up at retail. Retail on this was three fifty at the time. I don't know what it's trending now. I want to say maybe double the amount uh, to pick this up. If you can find somebody that's selling it, uh, I don't. I, I would assume that this would be considered an import. Uh, I ended up buying this at show site. I ended up picking this up at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, that was an, an import seller uh, that year, 2016 or 2017, and I ended up going home with this. So, And I didn't even know about this. This was a surprise release. I was walking the floor on Comic-Con, and it just blew me away. Another phenomenal cool feature with this one is the, the top vents, the breathers. Those are the breathers. Uh, the Nautilus, on occasion, has to surface, and it has to cycle its air. Uh, let's pop that out right there and yes your eyes aren't deceiving you that is a little stairway that you just saw I'll show that to you right there once the camera can focus on there but yeah those those are stairs uh, that's one of the the really cool features that other Nautilus models do not include are the breathers because to me the breathers mean that it once it surfaces it will usually hang out at the surface of the ocean and it's honestly all, all it's doing is just cycling the old air with the uh, with the clean air those are the breathers, and there's the uh, stairway. Uh, it makes it look alive. To me, the breathers make it look alive. Uh, and, and if you know uh, the features and the, char the characteristics of the Nautilus, you would know that uh, th this is one important feature. And that's how you can see a little hatch on there. That's how you would exit and, and, and enter the actual sub, even though uh, there is other options to actually exit the sub beautiful piece by far top notch uh, the Tokyo Disney sea sub is still one of my favorites I like this one this is nice this is a beautiful one now let's talk history here 2005 was the 50th anniversary of 20,000 leagues under the sea and master replicas released a 32 inch model of the Nautilus now what I have here is a kit bash uh, third-party model that used the actual mold for that version so this is this is kind of this is not licensed what you're looking at here this is more of a kit bash this is a interpretation of, of what I assumed the Nautilus would look like if it was recovered after it sank during the explosion of Mysterious Island uh, it's not perfect I wanted it to look rusted and, and aged and and I did make some errors and one error that I made was the lights I didn't uh, position the lights accordingly it shouldn't be four yellows and four whites on there uh, I believe I also messed up too on the, uh, on the actual propeller on this one too or the rudder I ended up breaking the rudder but overall this uh, mold that was used to birth this uh, kit here was from the master replicas mold and I had I had the Master Replicas Nautilus, and I ended up selling that one too to buy my first house. 
it's interesting because I've had two of these non uh, the I've had I've had the master replica Nautilus, which I sold to uh, to buy my first house, and then the Tokyo one was for the second one for for, for my second home because they're if you ever need you know quick cash and you have an eBay, you can always you can always uh, liquidate certain pieces to to collect. But uh, I ended up going after the uh, the Tokyo one. I had the Tokyo Disney Sea sub. I ended up, I sold it, and years later, I ended up re, re, reacquiring it. A uh, little 9 volt battery on there. The difference between this one too and, and the Master Replicas one is that Master Replicas was not illuminated, didn't have any electronics. So uh, this here, like the lights, I, I added the lights with, with the light kit, uh, the little alligator, uh, the, the little rungs for, for the ladder, I added that with staples. Um, the breathers were a kit uh, which you can pick up through RC subs it's a guy that sells it up, uh, that, that, that does work on Nautilus model kits he sells a few of these pieces but I mean overall it's still a great piece that being said though I did I did come across a brand new version just recently of the Master Replicas Nautilus the Nautilus replica and uh, since I was going through the whole tour and I've been planning this out uh, I was like, you know what I'm gonna just go all Nautilus all 20,000 leagues this photo here uh, this was taken 2007 this is my first master replicas Nautilus sub and if you look right there the limited edition of 0 186 remember that number because uh, you'll see the difference between uh, when I had that model and this one here, I was very, very fortunate to acquire uh, this piece, brand new, still sealed, uh, from a, uh, what do you call that, an estate sale. Somebody, an older person, gentleman, lady, had this, and I was able to acquire it, uh, still sealed and brand new, and I was in shock. Uh, it's not cheap. I will assure you that if you if you decide to search for a master replicas Nautilus, uh, it is it's not going to be cheap. Uh, fun fact though, I do remember what the pre-order price was from Master Replicas back in 2004 because I remember I ended up pre-ordering this through Master Replicas Direct, and it was $300. It was $300 bucks back in 2004. That was a lot of money back then <laughs> for a collectible piece like this. It, uh, going through the whole unboxing, and, and just, it, it's very surreal, it's very goosebumpy. Uh, I'm so happy that I was able to get this particular piece back into my collection. I missed it. I had it for the longest, and um, I feel very fortunate that I was able to get it at a decent price. Very happy, still brand new. I mean, everything the just unraveling the nameplate, the, the top foam layer it was very, it was very surreal. I was like, wow, it was, it was just like 2005 because you ended up pre ordering this from Master Replicas in 2004, and I ended up did get I it was delivered in 2005, and uh, I was it was an exciting piece, it really was. And uh, I'm looking at the color because I forgot what it looked like. <laughs> I knew that the paint application on this was very different than what most current Nautilus model kits are using now, but I love it. I really, really do. I love the color. Uh, I love the base. I remember the base with the reflective blue mirror on the bottom, which if you shine light on it from a certain angle, it creates that uh, ocean hue to it. It's just beautiful. Simply beautiful. And yes, I am aware that Master Replicas has folded again. Poor company. You know, Master Replicas in the early 2000s, they were on top of their game. I don't know their full story. I don't. I know they folded once, and I know they folded again. This year was hard for them, and they folded again. I know they tried to relaunch them. So. But this is a reminder of, of, of what they were at their peak and their height, and the whole experience. I mean, look at this. Look at the, the quality of this certificate book. I once said, yeah, there you go. The, the certificate of authenticity 
and there is the nameplate for the Nautilus, uh, 0977. So this is later in production. I don't know how many were made. I don't know if it was 1,000 units. I don't know if it was 2,000. No clue. Oh, this is nice. A little uh, bonus pamphlet of their upcoming products in 2005. Yeah, most people don't aren't aware of that Master Replicas. I mean, they made majority of their fortune off of Star Wars. I, I don't understand how... Oh, that's right. It was the bust. The, uh, the, the real estate bust of 2008-2009 is what did them in. Uh, Nautilus Replica Certificate of Authenticity. This is cool. I forgot about this. I forgot the whole uh, card certificate of authenticity, master replica. It's nice. I mean, this is that's incredible. Wow. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Now let's get the, the, the nameplate on here. Pop that on there. And there we go. Do use a little. The actual glue uh, doesn't stick anymore, so I ended up adding some gorilla tape to it. So it'll stick just right. And 0977, and my original one that I had back in the day was 019186. So I had an earlier uh, release on it. But it, I mean, it's, to me, it, it still looks just as gorgeous as I had it back in the day over 15 years ago. And I ended up selling that one, uh, I want to say in 2012, I think was the year. Because it was to purchase my first home, and, and we needed a down payment, and we, we were running out of money. Uh, and I want to say I sold it for about 800 bucks, and uh, it helped. It really did, and I always knew I was going to go back. I'm like, you know what? I'll sell it. I'll pawn it off on eBay, but I'm coming back to it, when, and this is it. And you said it. Uh, this year has been hard for a lot of folks, and uh, I was able to get a good deal on this one. I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on this one, though. Uh, in pristine condition, brand new, but uh, I got a good deal. Uh, the propeller does not spin on this one. That was one of the uh, that was one of the things that I always I remember. Why didn't they just make the propeller spin? It's kind of like glued on there. But for the time, for the detail, uh, this thing is it still rocks for a 32 inch Nautilus sub. To me, the paint application still works. Uh, I would probably would prefer it a little bit to have more of that rustic hue hue to it, that scheme, but nah, it's fine to me, it's fine just as it is. I have uh, I have the, the other version that uh, I'll display with it side by side. And uh, this is, you know, off of the uh, brand new launching off the shipyards as Captain Nemo's christened in it. And uh, the, uh, the rust recovery version since the Nautilus did sink in Mysterious Island uh, and that was recovered would be that version. Well, I had fun. I, I gotta say something. This was uh, this was uh, more of a, of a fan project uh, to me to just kind of showcase my uh, my collection and love of the Nautilus subs. And uh, it just it makes me feel all warm and giddy because I do collect hot toys and I do collect NASA and I do collect a lot of stuff, but I don't give a lot of love to my Nautilus subs because I always feel uh, that I may alienate my audience. But this is this is something that I've been meaning to do for a while and just kind of go one on one and kind of show like you know I, I do collect a lot, but the Nautilus sub has it it has a special place in my heart and and I love it. I will always love the sub till the very end. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. I had fun doing this. And uh, hope the holidays are good for you guys. Thank you.